today I'm going to be reading to you. I am going to be reading I Have Lost My Way by Gail Foreman. But before I get into that, I am going to just light the scented candle. It is lavender scented. So this will just help to create a nice, calm vibe. So I'm just going to read the back to you so that you have an idea what is in store in this book. They lost their way but found each other. Freya has lost her voice while recording her debut album, the one that's supposed to propel her to stardom. <clears throat> Harun has lost the love of his life. Now he's decided to run rather than confront the truth. Nathaniel has lost everything. He's alone in New York City with a desperate plan and nothing left to lose. When a fateful accident draws these three strangers together, their secret starts to unravel and they begin to understand that the way out of their own loss might just lie in helping the others out of theirs. <clears throat> okay, chapter one. I have lost my way. I have lost my way. Freya stares at the words she had just typed into her phone. I have lost my way. Where did that come from? Excuse me, miss. The car service driver repeats. I think... I have lost my way. And Freya startles back to reality. She's in the back seat of a town car on her way to her, to her seventh, or is it eighth, doctor's appointment in the past two weeks. And the driver has gotten turned around outside the tunnel. She toggles over to her calendar. Park and 17th, she tells the driver. Turn right on third, then left on 71st. She returns her attention to the screen. I have lost my way. 18 characters, but the words have the undeniable ring of truth to them. The way Middle C does. The way few of her posts these days do. Earlier this morning, someone from Hayden's office put up a photo of her gripping a microphone, grinning. Hashtag born to sing, the caption read. Hashtag thankful Thursday. <clears throat> really, it should read hashtag throwback Thursday because the image is not only weeks old, it's of a person who no longer exists. I have lost my way. What would happen if she posted that? What would they say if they knew? It's only when her phone makes, makes the whooshing noise that Freya realises she did post it. The responses start to flow in, but before she has a chance to read them, there's a text from her mother. 720 Park Avenue and a dropped pin. Because of course her mother is monitoring the feed as vigilantly as Freya. As vigilantly as Freya. And of course her mother has misunderstood. Anyway, Freya hasn't lost her way. She's lost her voice. She deletes the post, hoping it was fast enough that no one screenshot it or shared it, 
but she knows nothing on the internet ever goes away. <clears throat> Unlike in real life. Her mother is waiting for her when the car arrives, pacing, holding the test results from the last doctor, which she had to hightail in it into the city to collect. Good, good, you're here, she says, opening the door before the driver has pulled to a complete stop and yanking Freya to the sidewalk before she has a chance to give him the $10 tip, tip she's holding. I already filled out the paperwork. She says this like she did it to save time, but she fills out paperwork, out the paperwork at all of Freya's doctor's appointments. They're ushered straight past reception into the examination room. It's the kind of service a 1,500 consult, no insurance taken, thanks Aiden, buys you. It's, what seems to be the problem? The doctor asks as he wash, washes his hands. He does not look at Freya. He probably has no idea who she is. He looks old, like a grandfather, though reportedly he has treated the sort of one named wonder that, as of a few weeks ago, everyone thought Freya was on her way to becoming. She wishes she read, read some of the responses before deleting that tweet. Maybe someone would have told her what to do. Maybe someone would have told her it didn't matter if she could sing, they'd still love her. But she knows that's bullshit. Love is conditional. Everything is. She's lost her voice, her mother says. Temporarily. She goes through the tediously familiar chronology. Third week in the studio and all going flawlessly and blah blah blah. And all the while the phrase, I have lost my way, goes through Freya's head, like a song on repeat, the way she and Sabrina used to live the same track over and over again, until they dissected it, uncovered all its secrets, and made them their own. It drove their mother crazy, until she discovered the utility of it. The doctor palpates her neck, peers into her throat, scopes her sinuses, Freya wonders how he would respond if she walked a loogie. If she would actually if he would actually look at her like a person instead of a piece of machine, machinery and has that has malfunctioned. If he could hear her singing voice or not. Can you sing a high C for me? the doctor asks. Freya sings a high C. She can hit the individual notes, her mother explains, and her pitch is perfect. Hayden says he's never heard pitch like that before. Is that a fact? The doctor says, feeling the chords in her neck. Let's hear a song, something simple for me, like happy birthday. Happy birthday? Who can't sing happy birthday? A child can sing happy birthday. A person who can't sing at all can sing happy birthday. To show her opinion of such a request, she starts to sing, but in a heavy French accent. Happy birthday to you, she thrills. Her mother frowns and Freya doubles down on the accent. Happy birthday to all. But her ma voice is smarter than she thinks. It will not be outsmarted by antics of a bad fake answer. And as soon as the song makes the baby leap in octave, from G4 to G5, she gets trapped up in it. The panic takes over. The breath turns to leap. Happy birthday, dear. And on dear the hap it happens. The air shuts off. The song is strangled mid-breath. A stillborn melody. Happy birthday to me. She finis finishes in, sarta in sarcastically, eternally American deadpan making a slicing gesture across her throat in case the message wasn't clear enough. Is it paralysis? We heard something like that happened with her mother voice drops. A doll. Freya can hear the hope in her mother's voice, not because she wants a, lo a vocal paralysis, but because she wants to link Freya to a doll. A few years back, she read that book, The Path, and brought and bought into it 200%. Dream it, 
speed is her motto. I'm going to send you for some tests, the doctor says, retreating into the already familiar jargon. A CAT scan, a biopsy, a LEMG, maybe an X-ray. He pulls out a card, slides it over, and gives Freya a look that does not seem at all that Hippocratic. And you might consider talking to someone. He did, but the lobotomy didn't take. Freya, her mother scolds, to the doctor. We've already, we're already seeing a term, therapist. We, like they're seeing him together, like they're both taking the little pills that are supposed to quell the anxiety that is supposedly, supposedly stifling Freya's voice. This just happened, literally overnight. If this were, and her, and here her mother's voice drops to a whisper, psychological, it wouldn't happen in the blink of an eye like that, would it? And the doctor makes non-committal noises. Let's schedule a follow-up in two weeks. Two weeks is too late. Hayden has made that clear. He called in favours to arrange a visit to the famous doctor. Treater of one named wonders like Adele and Lord and Beyonce. He paid the 1,500 consultation fee because this guy, Hayden swore, is a miracle worker, implying that what Freya needs is not overpriced medical care, but an actual miracle. Outside Hayden's car and the driver are waiting. Even though he didn't seem the driver to take Freya here, the driver opens the door and bows slightly. Mr. Booth has requested I bring you to the offices. Freya has spent much of the past two years in Hayden's offices, but the request makes her feel queasy. Her mother, who still, after all this time, acts like Hayden is the emperor and she, the peasant, looks freaked out. She frantically scrolls through her text. He probably just wants to know how it went. Hayden Booth doesn't summon without reason, and the reason would not be to gather information. Freya sure he received a call from the doctor the minute the door shut behind them. Or who knows, maybe he had a secret camera filming the entire exam. If a tree falls in the forest and no one hears it, doesn't make a sound. If she goes if she doesn't go to Hayden's office, he can't fire her. And if he can't fire her, her career isn't over. And if a career isn't over, people will still love her. Right? I'm tired, she tells her mother with a weary wave. You go. He asked for us both, she looks to the driver. Did he ask for us both? The driver has no clue. Why would he? I'm exhausted from all the stupid doctor's appointments, Freya says, going into what her mother calls diva mode. Diva mode befuddles her mother because in the one hand, dream it beat, but on the other hand, it's annoying. When her mother gets upset, she purses her lips in a way that makes her look exactly like Sabrina. Or Sabrina exactly like her. It's like the genes chose sides. Their old babysitter used to joke, meaning Freya took after their father, the reddish skin, the high forehead, the telltale Ethiopian eyes, whereas Sabrina looked more like her, their mother. Their hair curly, not kinky, the skin light enough to pass, if not for white then Puerto Rican. But then her mother reconsiders and the prune mouth is gone. You know what? Maybe that's motto. I'll talk to him. Remind him that you're only 19. That you've come so far. That we have so much momentum. Maybe making them wait will only make them hungrier. We just need a bit more time. She's back on the phone. I'm ordering you an Uber. Mom? I'm quite capable of getting myself back home. Her mother continues tapping on the phone. Freya's not meant to, to take the subway alone anymore. Her mother has a tracker installed on Freya's phone. She exercises caution, even though, like Freya's diva attitude, this too is premature. Freya is not famous. She is somewhere between buzz and celebrity on Hayden's scale. If she goes dancing at clubs, or hits the kind of bar or cafe frequented by up-and-coming actors slash models slash singers she recognised. 
if she doesn't, ex she's recognized. If she does an event at a shopping mall, which she no longer does, not on brand, the publicists say she's mobile, mobbed, mobbed. <laughs> but on the subway, amid regular people, she is exactly nobody. But her mother, every one of her, but to her, for her mother, every one of her acts, actions is aspirational. I'm just getting, gonna walk a bit, Freya tells her mother. Maybe go through the park, clear my head, see what's on sale at Barney's. She knows her mother will not refuse the healing power of Barney's. Though Freya still feels mildly uncomfortable in places like that, she's often followed and she is never sure it's because she's half fam if it's because she's half famous or half black. Go find something pretty, her mother says. Take your mind off things. What else is on the schedule? Freya asks, out of habit, because there's always something and her mother has it memorized. Her mother's awkward pause is painful because the answer is nothing. Nothing is scheduled because this time was allotted to being in the studio. Right now she's meant to be finishing up recording. Next week Hayden is going to some private island for a week and then he's back in the studio with Lulia, the gap-toothed singer he discovered busking in the Berlin metro whom Hayden made famous that her visage smokes from a so famous that her visage smokes from a billboard, billboard in Times Square. That could be you, Hayden once told her. Not anymore. Nothing, her mother says. So I'll see you back at the apartment. Well, it's Thursday. Thursday nights, her mother and Sabrina have a standing dinner date. It usually goes unmentioned. Freya is never invited. Obviously. I can put it off if you need to, her mother says. The bitterness is awful. She can taste it. She wonders if it'll melt the enamel of her recently whitened teeth. It's also embarrassing. What sh should she have to be bitter about when her sister is concerned? Sabrina, who, as her mother says, has sacrificed so much. She whispers the last part the same way she whispers breather when discovering what's going on with Freya. You're just taking a breather. Breather is code for self immolation You'd better go, Freya tells her mother, before the bitterness melts away her insides, leaving only a bag of empty skin. Hayden's waiting. Her mother glances at the SUV, the driver. I call you as soon as I get news. She climbs into the car. Clear your head. Take a day for yourself. Don't think about any of this. You never know. It might just be what the doctor ordered. I bet you can go if you go can go the rest of the day without thinking about this. You'll feel better. Go shopping, go home and binge scandal. Yes, that's exactly what Freya needs. And perhaps a glass of warm milk. And the second lobotomy. She waits for her mother to drive off before she starts walking, not south towards Barney's, but west toward the park. She pulls out her phone and looks at her Instagram feed. There's another shot of her standing outside the studio on 2nd Avenue under a just blooming cherry tree. The caption reads hashtag music, hashtag flowers, hashtag life, hashtag beautiful things. And the comments are full of nice things that should make her feel better. Nothing more beautiful than you. And need new vid. And follow back, please. A car honks and someone yanks her back onto the curb, sneering. Pay attention. Freya doesn't say thank you. Instead walks into the park where there is no traffic and she can read the comments in peace. She toggles over to her YouTube channel. Per Hayden's instructions, she has not posted anything in months. He wanted the fans to be famished for new material so that when the album dropped and new videos, they'd be devoured. Freya was worried they'd forget her, but Hayden said there were other ways to stay in the public eye and employed a publicist whose job was to place a series of anonymous scoops about her. 
prayer climbed up a hill onto a small bridge. A group of cyclists whizzes past her, blasting through the air with their shrill whistles as if they owned the park. She opens Facebook. She types Sabrina Gabid. Though she only allows herself this indulgence once a month, Freya knows that it won't be anything there. Her sister's Facebook page has been all but dormant for the past two years. Maybe two or three posts, or almost always tags. And yet, there it is, a fresh post, a few, few weeks old. A picture posted by someone named Alex Takeshida, of a man, presumably Alex Takeshida, holding up a delicate hand with a small sapphire ring. The caption underneath reads, She said yes. Even with the face cut off, Freya recognises that hand. She said yes. It takes Freya a minute to understand what this means. Her sister is engaged to Alex Takashida, someone Freya has never heard of, much less met. Freya clicks on Alex's timeline and discovers that Alex Takashida makes his posts public and Sabrina, though not tagged, is in nearly all of them. There is Sabrina clinking glasses with Alex in, at a restaurant. There is Sabrina and Alex on a beach. There is Sabrina beaming, beaming between Alex and their mother. There is Sabrina looking not like someone who sacrificed so much, but like someone happy. It makes Freya want to peek. To console herself, she opens the app that tracks what her mother now calls her engagements. She doesn't even need to see the comments anymore to feel better. She just needs to know that they're there, that the likes and followers are growing. The uptick of numbers is reassuring. The occasional downtick makes her feel like her stomach's falling out. Today, the numbers are going up. Those posts of her in the studio always do well. People are excited about her new album. She wonders what will happen when the moms go by and there is no album. Only she knows. At the first meeting with Hayden, he told her exactly what would happen. She opens the comments from the morning's Erzat's post. Love the flowers, can't wait for the album. She refreshes the page to see if anything else has come in, but nothing has. And though she knows it will only make her feel worse, she toggles back to the picture of Sabrina's hand. The cyclists were by, blowing their awful whistles at her, shouting at her to watch out. But Freya can't take her eyes off of her sister and all that happiness. Can't escape the sickening sensation that she'd done it all wrong. I have lost my way, she thinks once more, and, is, and understands how true this is. Another cyclo, cyclist whistles by, and Freya, still staring at the image of her sister's sapphire ring, jumps back and stumbles. And suddenly, she is not just lost, but falling. Falling off the bridge onto some poor soul below. Okay guys, um, I'm just going to read to you today. So, hopefully I have a new video soon. Where I will continue reading this book. I am sorry if I stumbled over a few words. Um, <laughs> hopefully as we go on with this book it will get better, my reading, I hope so. But anyway, I hope despite that that this was a re relaxing experience. And yeah, I hope you liked it. See you next time. Bye!